Hello everybody, Scott Donchikowski here, and today we're gonna look at another processing video. Um, this time, we're gonna process a waterfall. In particular, we're gonna be looking at a waterfall called Panther Creek Falls, which is in Washington, um, just outside the Columbia River Gorge. Um, it's deep in the mountains. Um, as you can see, there's lots of trees. Um, beautiful waterfall, it's about 130 feet high. Um, just a, it's a, it's a crazy place to go shoot, um, especially if you can get down to the bottom. Um, so today we're going to take a look at uh, editing this in Lightroom and then editing it further in Photoshop. And we're going to go from what you see here to this. Ta-da! Uh, let's take a full screen look at that just to wow you a little more. So this was a shot directly out of camera. We can see that here. And we are going to take it from this to this. Enter ethereal music. Okay, so first things first, we have the image in Lightroom. We're in the develop module. Um, we're gonna do just the you know general basic editing like we normally do. Highlights down, shadows up, dehaze, about 50 or so. <clears throat> um, we're going to, so the whole objective of this is to make some of these shadowy parts less shadowy and make the wider bits of the waterfall stand out amongst the background. Um, so that's why the highlights come down because we're trying to get a little bit more detail in the water. Um, but the idea is to kind of pull back a little bit of the detail here and make this the stream and all the water here, kind of the main focal point, because it just sort of gets lost when you um, when you just lower the highlights and increase the shadows. Uh, that's what we're gonna do with contrast, which is where dehaze plays a big part. So we put the dehaze up pretty high. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try to accentuate the waterfall a little more, and we're gonna use the whites slider for that. So we're gonna grab the white slider and we're just gonna increase this up. If you want to get a look at the pixels, that are turning white, just hold the Option or Alt key while you do this. Um, so I'm gonna go up to right about here, we'll let go, we'll see. I'm gonna zoom in just to kind of take a look at that, looks pretty good. There's still a bunch of detail in the falls. Um, maybe we'll pull down the dehaze just a little bit more to 40, that looks pretty good. Everything, I mean, you could stop here. I mean, this is just a, an awesome waterfall, but we need to go a step further. Um, so. Um, so that, that kind of covers the basic editing. Um, there's not really much you need to do with waterfalls. That's why we're going pretty light here in the basic panel. Um, but what we want to do is we're going to scroll down a little bit further here to lens corrections. We're just going to enable the lens corrections. Um, if you're like me, you don't like the vignetting removal. See on the sides here how the corners get a little hot. So the, the, the perspective change, the distortion um, correction that you see is welcome, but I don't like that the corners are, you know, are a little warmer or sorry, uh, more uh, pronounced than usual. So we're gonna take the vignetting side of here and we're just gonna drag that back down to zero. So it's not gonna correct for the vignetting um, in the lens. Um, so again, like if you wanted to stop here, boom, you're done. Like that's it. Almost every waterfall I shoot, I'm gonna do this to it and it's pretty much it. But I figured since we wanna make a, a more um, kind of robust video on this, we're gonna change the colors around a little bit. We're just gonna do a little bit more to it. So we're gonna go to HSL. HSL, if you don't know, stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. And we're going to kind of tweak the colors of this a little bit to eke out a little less green, a little more yellow. So we're gonna take our yellow slider and we're just gonna back that off just a little bit this away. And you see how we get much deeper, you know, orange and reddish hues here. It makes it more look kind of like fall. Um, this is only to taste. You can pull it all the way back if you want. You can go a little bit, like this looks pretty good to me. Um, Maybe I'll push up the greens a little bit to make them a little bit better or a little bit more, it appears saturated, but it's not quite saturation, it's just changing the hue. Um, and this is a good kind of end point, I guess, in Lightroom. Just changing the hue a little bit, just to get a little bit more color contrast in the image. We'll, we'll do a little bit more in Photoshop, um, but this looks really pretty as is. So, um, 
there really isn't much else I want to do to this in Lightroom. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click, we're going to select edit in and we're going to go to Photoshop. <clears throat> now that's going to pull it out into Photoshop. There we go. We'll zoom in a little bit. And now we're going to finalize and finish this image. So first thing I always like to do is do an Orton glow. Um, however, um, I want to do that at the end this time, because I know in this particular lesson that I want to do more to this particular image. So let's let's kind of do some things here. Um, the water over here on the right isn't quite as it's not running as much as I would have liked it to be when we were there. So I want to accentuate these drops a little bit more. I also want to get rid of some of the blue out of the water here. Um, and then we'll and then we'll do the glow at the very end. But the first thing I want to do is I want to sharpen it. I want to see how much detail I can actually get sharpened here. So typically when I sharpen, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to bring up filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. And we're going to see what the last sharpening I did does to this image. Um, pretty intense. You can see there's kind of like haloing here. Um, that all has to do with the radius. So let's lower the radius a little bit. Let's go to 1.4. And it should take care of a little bit of if I hold down the mouse here, you see that's before sharpening and that's after before, after before, after let's see what it looks like on the whole image. So there's no sharpening, sharpening that looks pretty good to me. I think I'll be okay with that. Um, and we'll hit okay. <clears throat> Pull that over here. All right, so the sharpening is done. Now what we want to do is sort of we want to try to kind of make this a little look a little better. Again, I don't really dig the blues here, so we want to make this just white, white water all the way around, um, and we want to accentuate these drops a little bit more. <clears throat> so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to add an adjustment layer onto this whole thing, and we're just going to go kind of wild with it. Um, so I want to grab this button right here in the adjustments. It's called levels. So if I click on that, that puts an adjustment layer over the entire image. And I'm going to just increase the levels here quite a bit so that I can take a look at these drops and see what's happening here. I'm just sort of playing with this. Eh, I think we're let's delete this and do one more just so it's base level. And then we're just going to kick this all the way over like that. And so now this drop here, I'm looking at this drop and this drop right here of the water. And that looks pretty good. At least I'm just looking at this again, don't ignore the rest of it. We're going to paint in the drop here, <clears throat> just in the white area. Okay, so we have our levels done. We're going to close that. And we don't want this to show up on the entire image. So I'm going to make this mask, since it's a white mask, right? And we want to just revert this to a black mask. So we're going to hit Command or Control I to invert that adjustment. And now, when we do that, we can take a brush, and we can paint in the adjustment like this. So we can get the areas that we want. But this is not a great way to do this. I only want to do this in the lighter areas, not on the whole image. And you can see where I've painted, it's painting in the adjustment whole cloth. And I don't want to do that. I want to limit my painting to just the areas that are white. So we'll option click there, we'll go up to our history, and we'll just get out of the brush tool. We're going to scroll back up to where we said invert. And now you'll see if I option click on the mask, the mask is completely black, and that means we can paint fresh. I'll option click on this again, we can see the image. <clears throat> okay, now we need to have Photoshop sort of give us a selection of the whiter areas of the image. And if you're familiar with Orton glow, then you're going to be familiar with how this works. Okay, so I'm going to click on my background layer, I'm going to go to channels, and I am just going to command or control click on RGB. And that makes a selection of the lighter pixels in the image. We'll go back to layers. I'm going to click 
on the adjustment. And since I have a selection going here, if I paint with a brush, it's only going to paint in the selection, nowhere else. So I can zoom in over here. We'll grab a smaller brush, just about like that big. Opacity, we put at 30%. We don't want to paint full opacity, so we'll leave that at 30%. And then all we need to do is just paint the drop. And we'll just sort of paint like so. Paint this down like this, only where the water is going. We'll kind of brighten that up a little bit. We'll brighten this and this up a little bit, right? So I just want to accentuate the water. So that's what I'm doing. I'm making the water just slightly brighter. And we'll continue that out this way. You don't have to be perfect in this. It's all just touch. So we'll kind of accentuate all these little drops here. But the main focus was this one. But since we're here, we might as well just keep going. Make my brush a little bigger here. And I'm just going to come out here and make this a little brighter, make that a little brighter. In the process of making it brighter, we're also um, getting rid of some of that bluish, greenish tint that was in the water. We'll get rid of that a little bit more with a more specific action. Um, but for now, it's not bad. Right now, I just want to make the water a little brighter. So here is not a problem in the middle. Over here to the left is. So we're just going to paint over there. Get that little spot there. We'll paint these drops here as well. There looks good. And then we'll come back and we'll do this again. So I'll make the brush a lot smaller. And we're going to paint this drop here. Make that a little brighter. We'll kind of drag this down like so. We'll paint this guy a little brighter. This guy, this guy here, and these guys here. We'll just accentuate all of this here. Make sure we get all of that. And that looks pretty good. I'm satisfied with that. Let's go a little heavier here. All right. Let's see where we what we did. I'm going to option click on the mask. Okay, that's good. So you can see where we painted here. <clears throat> good. So now I'm going to get rid of the selection. So Command or Control D will get rid of the selection for you. You can also go up to Select and then Select Deselect from the menu here. Looks pretty good. <clears throat> so let's see what happens before and after. So if I turn that Levels Adjustment off, that's what it looks like, and then back on and off, on, and off. So you can see we've, we've got a lot more detail or at least some appearance of water falling over here, which is kind of what we wanted to do. We can zoom in here and we can see that it looks like there's more water coming off here than normal just because we brighten the area. That looks pretty good. Next, <clears throat> let's change the color even more. So we're going to do two things. One, I want to accentuate the yellow, yellows in the area here and here. And then the second one we're going to do adjustment of color is we're going to try to get rid of the blues here. Okay. <clears throat> we're going to try to make the water just white and black. All right. So first things first, we're going to come up to our adjustments again, and we're going to click hue and saturation. Okay. Then with all these as default, I'm going to grab my hue slider and I'm just going to drag it this way. So, you know, if we go too far, it changes way too much. So we only want to go to about, I don't know, let's say negative 10. No, that's a little too much. Let's go negative six. All right. So now that's changing on the entire image. That looks okay, but I want to retain some more greens in here. Some of the greens that were present in the original image are a little too yellow. So we're going to grab our brush again. Just hit B for brush or come over here and just select the brush tool. And we don't want to paint in white because the mask that's over here in the hue and saturation layer is white. So we want to paint back the original colors in the image. So we want to we want to make some of the image look more like this and not like this. OK, so we're going to flip these colors. We're going to paint in black with our brush. We'll make it a little larger here and we're just going to 
you know, with again with 30% opacity, we'll just come in and we'll kind of bring back some of these green areas. So this area here looks good. This area, let's kind of bring this up here. And you can hear me clicking. I'm just sort of click, 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 just quickly, fast. And I'm just trying to paint in where I think we should have more richer, greener tones. So down here, maybe we'll swipe a couple times to minimize the orange effect a little more. Kind of here, this way, obviously, these guys are way green. So right there, this section here, this section down here, maybe a couple little swipes out in here this section and then the green here as well. We'll change that. All right. So now you can see if I option or alt click on the mask, that's where we painted. So here's the before and after before and after. So it just brings a little bit more richness, earthy tones into the image. I think that looks really nice. <clears throat> and again, that's where we started in Photoshop. And this is where we've ended up so far. But again, there's still a little bit of blue in the water that we want to get rid of. So we are going to do another hue and saturation adjustment. We're going to bring that up. And this time, we're also going to desaturate quite a bit. We're just going to, well, we'll bring this down to like maybe negative 70. So we're desaturating the whole image, but again, we're gonna we're gonna paint in the areas that we want desaturated. Okay. So right now the mask is set to white. We're gonna invert that again. So Control or Command I to invert that. Now the mask is black, so we have no desaturation at all, and we're gonna zoom in on the water area, and we're going to paint in the desaturation down here. Okay. So we have our brush already selected, but we're painting in black, so we wanna flip these colors around, keep our opacity at 30%. And then we're just going to click and swipe here. And anywhere that we don't like that color, it's important to swipe, not just click in a circle, so that it, it blends, make your brush a little smaller, click and swipe, brush a little smaller for this little area, click and swipe. There's blues here. And the reason why I'm doing a full desaturation is because this blue is very faint. Typically, if you wanted to desaturate a color, you could um, you could do a color uh, selection by going up to select color range. But in this case, if you're accurate with your brush strokes, you shouldn't have an issue. So again, and since the opacity is set very low, we're not seeing a full desaturation in the brush because we're blending using a very small opacity or low opacity. I don't really see anywhere else that has that kind of bluish tint to it if I search around here. So that looks pretty good. I'm digging the way that looks. Let's zoom out. And I think we're just about done with that. <clears throat> so here we go. There's before and after, before and after. We can see it a lot down in here. So we're just trying to get rid of this, getting rid of this bluish tone here. There's after. Totally good. All right. So it's the subtleness. So you need to be subtle with this. Otherwise, it's going to appear that you did something to the image. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now we'll just finalize this by adding our um, Orton Glow. Okay, so we're gonna click in the negative space here. We're gonna we're gonna need to blur. Remember, with Orton Glow, you have two layers. One is the sharpen layer. One is the blurry layer. Um, we have the sharpen layer here. That's our background layer. But we need the blurry layer, and we don't have a second one. So we're gonna combine all of these into one layer, and then blur that. We want to keep all this though. So we're gonna we're gonna hit Shift, Option, Command, 
E. If you're on a PC, that's Shift Control Alt E. And what that does is it flattens everything you have, copies it, and puts it on top of everything. So that's what this layer is. It's just a combination of everything below it. Okay. Shift Option Command E, Shift Control Alt E. Okay. So now we're going to blur this. So we're going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we'll do 30, just like our normal Orton Glow. Okay, there we go. Now we have that done. We're going to uncheck this box to bring back our image. We'll click on our background layer. We'll go to Channels, Command, click on RGB. Again, this is all in the Orton Glow video. So if you've watched that, you should be familiar with this. We'll go back to Layers, click on our Blur layer, make it visible, and then click the add layer mask icon. And now we have our Orton Glow almost done. We just need to select our layer here, change the blend mode to soft light, and we're good to go. You can also play with the density of this too. If I double click this, you'll see it brings up this layer mask properties. And I can change the density of this to kind of make it more or less, you know, blurry. So let's do like, Let's do like 80% here. And then when we zoom in, we see there's a lot more going on with the glowiness. Looks pretty good. I really like how this turned out. It's not quite finished yet. It looks a little dark in some of these areas, but that's why we have Lightroom. So we have everything done we need to do in Photoshop. It's sharpened, it's got the glow, it's added some of the colors that we want. It's highlighted some of the waterfall over here that wasn't really evident. <clears throat> um, if you needed to do any kind of uh, um, content aware filling at this point, like this is where you would do it. So with all of these layers done, we'll, we'll keep the work, but we want to we want to do content aware fill on a layer that has everything finished. So again, we're gonna do that stamp visible, which is again, shift control alt E or shift command option E on a Mac. And we'll do some content aware fill. So this little log right here, I don't really like. So we're gonna get rid of that. So I'm gonna go to my lasso tool and I'm just gonna lasso this thing. Okay, right click, fill. And you see that the option is already content aware. We'll hit OK, and then we'll get rid of that little log there. <clears throat> now that looks much better. It's a little cleaner over here. I don't really see anything else that's offending me too much. Actually, these little bits here, that looks like plastic. It's not. It's just water on a, um, on a leaf. But let's see what happens if we try to content aware this out. OK, make the selection. Right click, fill. Okay. Mm, no, not great. So we'll command option Z to go back a couple steps. And I think we'll just leave it the way it is. It does kind of wink at me, but it's not too bad in the general photo. I don't really go over there that often with my eyes. My eyes are generally directed to this area right here. So I think we've done a successful job. Um, all right. So with that said, let's close the image by hitting the little X up here, and then we'll hit yes to save it. Photoshop will save the image as you see. We'll go back to Lightroom. Let's make this full screen. Shift F if you're unfamiliar with that. <clears throat> All right, so the shadows are looking a little dark. It's a little contrasty at this point. So my last edit is going to just bring some of those shadows back using the shadow slider in Lightroom. So right around 30 or so. Okay, well, how, to, how close did we get to the one that I did earlier? So there's the one that I did earlier. There's the one that we are now pretty close. Pretty close. I think that's very successful. And remember, this one is the one that we finished in Lightroom. And this is the final edit in Photoshop. Pretty close, but it's a little, I think it's a little better here and here. It's obviously sharper. 
Um, we got rid of some of the green in the water, the aqua in the water. So I think that's pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I hope you guys are too. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Subscribe for more videos. I try to put these out as fast as I can um, with my shooting schedule and workshop schedule. Obviously, that's a little easier said than done. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.